Hey, hi buddies. So this is going to be a very exciting session ahead where we are going to look how to sync up incremental data loads, uh, which is in SQL Server, we have tables in a data warehouse environment. environment. We have a facts table, which looks up on the dimension tables and then populates the data, a value valued data. So basically when the data is being populated, the facts table looks up for surrogate keys in the dimension tables and accordingly inserts or updates the value in, in the in the facts table. Considering that we have a staging facts table and then we want to push that staging fact table or sync it up in with the production table, we would look up for surrogate keys for the dimensions and, and dimension tables and from there we would uh, insert for new records or update the existing records. The delete scenario doesn't come ideally in a, in a standard data warehousing environment but what we are going to see here is end-to-end -end sync up which I mean is the source table in this staging environment needs to be synced up with the uh, production table so the end result of the production table sh should be the source table I hope I'm clear so we are not just going to uh, take it to the data warehousing but one step ahead so it's not just insert and updates but we are also going to delete uh, the, the records which are there in the target and are not present in the source during our data incremental sync up so let's try to look at this and and and, and I will be demonstrating that in three different approaches so I hope this is going to be exciting session and, and a lot of learning from SSIS perspective. So this is the first blog where I'm discussing how to do that with the help of SSIS. The next session uh, or the blog would be with CDC. So let's get started with SSIS and, and see what I have in here. I have two instances of SQL Server. Uh, the first instance I would consider that my staging environment where I have created an employees underscore source table and this table looks like the, the schema of the table looks like as per the creation here so basically if you see the data in this table is something like this we have four records and we have a nullable column the department column I have deliberately put it as nullable so that we also uh, case handle this scenario now this is the record and then I have created in another server which is the second instance against my target database I have created EMP underscore target so, so the schema again remains the same the ID remains the primary key and, and the rest of the schema also remains the same now if we try to take a look at this table what we see here is we have four records and we would like to sync them up with our end table so so uh, let me just roll back the right so so my table currently looks like this I have five records basically and the file records look like this so this is my production so let me just keep it here and then I say staging so my staging data remains like this so basically my final result in my employee target table should be this one so what we see here is we see that the there is no change in the employee ID 1 there is a change in the department for employee ID 2 there is no change for employee ID 3 and we have a new record as employee ID 4 uh, in our staging table while we do not have any employee with employee ID 5 in our staging so basically if you see we are we should be deleting this we should be inserting this and we should be updating this value for 2 uh, with the with the department of admin so this should be updating updated so so our final result still remains this and we'll see the solution that we have undertaken with the help of SSIS now let's go back to the SSIS package uh, there are three approaches that I'm going to discuss here the first approach let's try to take a look at the first approach I have created two OLEDB connections the first connection remains 
to the source database so what it is it is connecting to my server and, and, and source DB the second one is connecting to the uh, other instance uh, onto the target DB the only change or the only thing to notice is the source DB it, that's fine the second instance is basically I'm using the property that is re retain same connection to true I'll explain it that would come in the approach 2 and 3 for which I need to retain same connection to be true for, for approach 1 this is the update and insert part and this is the delete so ideally if you see you would simply need the, the update and insert only if you are actually using a data warehousing facts table load you would not need this you would not need the delete portion but I want to completely sync this up that is why I've, I've also added the delete portion and, and the approach to also the delete portion comes after the ins update and insert so let's try to take a look I have created a sequence container which contains the data flow task and inside the hood what I have here is I have created first of all a connection which is actually a, a connection to the employee source table and this source table uh, is actually acting as a left outer join so this is the table and I have created an alias for output uh, column so that we can identify this uh, distinctly so first we are actually creating a source connection onto our source or the staging table and these are the column identities I also create another connection to the target and with the employee target table I create an aliases for them as well next I just since I am going to use, use merge join so I would need to sort them up so I am sorting them by ID uh, in ascending order so because merge would accept sorted data so I am again sorting this up uh, on the ID then I move on to add my merge join which is for a left outer join so if you see I am left outer joining with my source EMP uh, underscore source with EMP underscore target on the ID column and then I am actually uh, pulling out all the output aliases or all the all the available columns from source as well as uh, the target so basically the approach is uh, when I left out to join I would uh, on the ID column and I, I, I get the target ID as null those would be the new records and when I get the the change in the columns for uh, the name and the department those are the update columns so let's just see what we have here so this is the select this is the select of your query this is the on condition in the left outer join so this is the on condition this is your select of uh, I mean if you want to add you would select all the mappings and, and you can do that so this is the left outer join using merge and then we have select uh, selected all the available columns from both the tables the source and the target and then I act, I, I add the conditional split. So in a, in a, in a SQL, in a T SQL, the conditional split is your where condition. So we have select, we have the two tables left out to join on uh, the ID column, and then we have the where. So the conditional split is actually the where condition based upon which I we are retrieving the data. So for when the ID underscore target column is null, those are the new records and when the change records so the condition for change records I just want to elaborate here I, I would want to add this so let's see so the condition is something like this what I do here is when the target name is not equal to, equal to your source let's just say source and and then I am null handling since if you see the department target and the, de uh, the department target in, in, in the column is actually nullable column so we need to null handle because the, for the scenario when null equals to null for both the da uh, data and both the tables when the department for that particular ID is null uh, your data would not be consistent so we need to null handle it so we are actually null handling it to a default value and then we are comparing the values so this is how we are actually getting the updated data so uh, let's just rectify this error as well that I have committed 
perfect so we have these two conditions for update and and the id for for new columns now once we get that what i have done here is i have added for for the inserts i have added a oledb destination where i have pointed it to employee target and then the mapping goes i am actually mapping the id source so these uh, the condition is new record insert so on this condition i am uh, populating the id source a name and department i mean i'm inserting it directly that's all and next what we have here is for update records what we are doing is we are using oledb command transformation to update so what we have in here is we are using the connection manager target and we move on to the component properties here we simply use this query we update the employee target set name and department onto the values these are actually parameters basically first second and third where where the id is equal to a question mark you would simply uh, put the uh, question marks for the mappings now let's go to the mappings what we have here is we match match each of the parameters 0 1 and 2 with the uh, column data that we are receiving so we want to update uh, the destination table that is the target tables name with the name source and department with the department source based upon the id target uh, i mean id of the target that we that we fetch so for update records we we put we map it uh, the parameters in this fashion and that's all that we do here that's done so that's your update and insert now let's move on and see what we have done for delete now if you take a look for delete it's pretty simple we are using the target table uh, and it's employee underscore target and we use the columns aliases and then we use the lookup transformation so the employee target table once the insert supposing here let's just run the update and insert first and let's take a look so uh, execute container I'm executing the update and insert perfect now let's try to take a look what our data looks like after the insert and update has happened in the target so if you see here this is your data this is your production data now does it match your staging yeah for most of the part it does the only problem is the delete has not happened the rest of the records are perfectly fine in sync so we need to work on the delete so now let's take a look what we have done for the delete now if you take a look in the data flow task we are using the target database sorry target table and then we add a lookup with the uh, actual table so now if you look look at your target table looks something like this the data for the target table and now you want to put a lookup with the staging table on the id column and see what is the data that it, that is not matching what is the data in the target which is which is not matching with your uh, staging table so that's what we have done we have used the uh, used the lookup transformation i will explain the lookup transformation in detail in, in a separate blog so we have added uh, we have used the filter redirect rows to no match output so we have these options uh, we are redirecting the no match records to a per, uh, to a separate workflow now there is a connection that we are using that's a source db it connects to your employee source and the columns that is being looked up is actually the id target looks up to the id column and we have added an alias id source that's all now we take the lookup for no match output and then map it to our oily db command for deletes so again we are connecting to the target db and based uh, and here in the target what we do is we simply say delete from employee target where id is equal to question mark now what is the id that we are looking at we are looking at the id which we get here which does not match that is the id from the target which doesn't match to the staging i hope i'm clear enough so we are we are trying to match the id from the target with the staging and those ids which do not match we get those ids here and we try to delete them directly uh, and that's all that we have done now let's try to execute in here
perfect now if we take a look that, that this, this was our last data now if we take a look at the target what we see here is we are actually in sync our production data is actually in sync with our staging isn't it so that's how we have done the complete sync up now the problem here in this approach lies in in the data load in the sense that we what we have done here is first of all we are we need to sort we need to sort the data and then we are using a, a merge join so the complete data would be loaded and also here if you see OLEDB command this would happen for one row at a time so when we are having a huge table the problem would be the update would happen for one record at a time which uh, would take a lot of time and it is not the best practice as such it is not a set, set based approach you are not uh, conducting the uh, update in a set so again here also if you see we are deleting it one record at a time and, 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 and then we are using a lookup so now let's see what we, what we uh, do here in the second approach uh, I would again revert back I have taken a backup and uh, in a in the backup table I'm reverting back the change uh, again and we'll use the second approach so again our data goes back to being what it was before the sync up now let's try to look at the second approach this in the, the second approach is where we would need to retain this this connection property uh, to true and let's start what I what I would be doing is I I'll be uh, using the global temporary table so here if you see I have created a temporary uh, table for update and uh, the schema for this temporary table remains uh, in sync with both the uh, target and the source tables that's all that I have done here and this table is being built on the target database in the temp DB and now in the next flow I move on to the destination uh, sorry sorry the data flow task everything remains as it was the only change is in the update so I want to do the, the thing in, the, in a set based approach so entire thing remains same I have added a OLEDB destination and in the OLEDB destination set the property for validate external metadata is false that's the first thing that you would do and what you do is you actually insert that the, the the data for update into a temporary table that is employee underscore update hash hash employee underscore update that's all you do so with this help what you are going to have you are going to use is you are going to load that data for update from your source uh, server and onto the temp, uh, temp table I mean the temp DB of the temp table and that would remain in the target server that's that's the approach now after you are done after you have done that we would use this table and we would use this query to update so basically if you see the query is, is fair and simple it's uh, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to update this we are trying to update the values of the target table I mean the name and the department with uh, with the help of the data that we have so the, the whole benefit that I get in here is the set based approach I am able to update the entire table in one go so that's the whole benefit so let's execute this container the, the only thing that I would want to emphasize is you have to valid you have to set the validate external metadata to uh, false and delay the validation and then run so, so that's all that you have to do let's execute this container now perfect now if you take a look in this our target table what does it look like again what we have here is everything is in sync the only change or uh, the delete is the part which is still remains which is still pending so now let's move on what we have here in delete part let's see again in the delete I want to do it in the set based approach so what I have done here is again I have created a temporary table I have put everything as is war at as it was uh, but I have removed the OLEDB command and I have added a destination where I am pushing all the data to be deleted so any matches which is not found I am pushing them into a temporary table and then I am using a delete so what we have for delete is again 
a simple inner join which would help me I'm joining the temporary table I'm joining the temporary table with the target table and based upon the ID and deleting anything which is matched basically we are populating the table temporary table for the matches so if you see anything which is matched I can delete it I am populating here the no matched data so the no match data goes to the employee underscore hash hash employee underscore delete uh, table and then I can simply match and delete it so let's run this container and see our, our, our data what it is what it does look like so if you see the target it is perfectly in sync our records are perfectly in sync with the staging uh, that's the approach too for you I'm again reverting this back and I'm again reverting this back to what it was and we'll see what we have in the third approach uh, in the third approach what I have here is I'm using the merge join so what I am doing here is I'm creating a temporary table uh, I want to do everything in one go I'm creating a temporary table for employee source uh, and I'm loading everything from the employee uh, from the source server onto the destination so it's it's pretty simple I'm connecting to the source database or the staging database I'm using employees I'm loading the employee source onto the target so if you see here I'm loading it on the target database so again if you see here I have delayed you have to set up uh, the validate external metadata to false the property has to be set up to false uh, because it, it would be validating that so so you have to set it to false because the table would be created in the runtime uh, that's all and next what we do here is that's the trick we are using the merge keyword for SQL Server 2008 so if you see this is the keyword understanding this is pretty simple we are using the target table and then we are merging it with the source so this is the command and we are merging it on the ID and when we say when it is not matched by target then we insert so when source doesn't match by target we are going to insert those values into our target table and when it's matched when, when the value is matched when the source ID value is matched with the target ID value and the name for the columns are not the same and we have null handle and the or the department so either the name or the department is not same we tend to update them then we set it to update and lastly when it is not matched by source when the target is not matched by source we delete them so actually what we do here is we do all the three things in one go so we have deleted inserted and updated everything we have synced up the table in one go so it is again a set based approach but the only issue would be you are actually loading the complete table from the source onto the target server onto the temp db of the target server so let's just try to run this okay cool so we have this currently let's try to execute this completely and see perfect okay so this is my end result so is my result in sync with yes it is so with the advantages and disadvantages of uh, all the three approaches I have tried to discuss and put forth a way to incrementally sync up your staging tables with your production tables the only uh, thing I would want to add in here is if there is a foreign key dependency for two tables and you want to sync them, them up uh, first sync up the table which is depending upon another table in a foreign key uh, constraint uh, and, and then move forth on the parent one and you should be able to do it that's pretty simple using the same approach you can e either use one I mean you can use one of the approaches that I have discussed here I really hope that this art uh, blog benefits you immensely uh, and, I, and I really think that it would. Uh, thank you friends. Have a great evening. See you.